Hello, my name is Bobby and today I'm going to be taking you through a worked example using ScriptRunner for Confluence Data Center. In this example, I'm going to be using two ScriptRunner features to create a macro that allows me to extract data from an external database. So for this example, I'm going to be using the features resources and custom macros. So let's run through what those features are in a little bit more detail. Resources is the ability to create a connection to an external database, which then gives you the ability to access that data from within that database whilst you're writing your scripts. This can be useful if you have data that drives business logic for your company that isn't necessarily stored within Confluence itself. For this example, we're going to be using the resource feature to extract the data from a world database to get information about different countries. Custom macros is the ability to create completely custom macros from the ground up for your Confluence instance. If you or your business are finding yourself needing a macro and you cannot find it anywhere else, this functionality gives you the ability to create the macro yourself. We're going to be using this feature to create the macro that will show the information we extract from the world database. So the first thing I need to do for this example is to build the resources connection to my database. So if I go to my Confluence instance and then the administrative section, I can log in and go to resources. Here I can click to create a resource and click on database connection. And now I need to then to the information <coughs> for my database. So the info, the pool name is country picker DB. I'm just going to enter in this URL, the driver class name. So we have the examples available here. I'm just going to paste this in. The username and password to access the database. and then an SQL to test the connection. So for this SQL, we are going to use all from. Now we can click to preview and we can see that this connection is successful and it's extracting the data. So now we can add and that resource has now been created and is ready for use. Now that the resource has been created, we can get into actually building the macro, the custom macro that we're going to be using to show the information. So if I go to macros, create macros, custom script macros, I'm now in the field. I'm just going to enter some basic information. So we're gonna call this world DB as a key. The name is going to be world DB. And that's all we're gonna currently define. So we can keep this quite straightforward and simple. We're not going to add parameters currently. Now I can get into the macro code section, which is where I'm going to be building my macro. So the basic principle is I need to get all of my tools ready to build a HTML table. I need to get the data from the database itself. I then need to build the HTML output and then convert it to, to, to the correct format. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add these four lines. These four lines build the tools that we're going to be using to build the HTML to show the table. Now, as you can see, we've got some red lines, so we're gonna add in some libraries. So the markup builder library And then we're going to see component locator and X HTML content. So we're going to add those. And those are the libraries that we need. Next, we have to get ready to extract the information. So I'm going to add in the line of code now. And I'm going to run through exactly what it's doing. So this is extracting the information from the database. So first things first, we need to define the database util, which is a script runner library. So we're just gonna copy and add that in here. And we also have a num to show here. I'll explain what that does, but just for now, we're going to define it as 10. So 
So what this these lines of code are doing, it's creating a variable issues and it's going into the database connection called country picker db and it's performing a SQL query to select all from the country table with a limit of how many we define here with the num to show variable. So that's all this doing. So once these code, this line of code has been executed, we will now have a variable called issues, which will have 10 lines of information from the country table in our country picker database. So now what we need to do is actually define the HTML that we're going to be outputting. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create a variable called output and we're going to give the beginnings of a HTML table. So we define a table, we're defining the body, and then we're defining the header row first. Next, we need to build out each line for the countries that we have selected in the issues um, variable. So I'm going to paste the lines in here and again go through what they are. So this is a simple for loop for every issue in the issues variable we are going to loop through each iteration the current issue that we are on is stored in the ISS variable and then what we do is we take the existing output so the existing HTML we have ex we have currently and we append or add on to this code here all this code is is the information from the issue that we've extracted from the database so dot code dot name dot continent dot population Now this will show red squiggly lines. This is because currently Groovy does not recognize ISS as an object that has these values in it. Because we haven't defined it, we could do, but there's no need to. The ISS variable does have those variables and it will work and it will compile and it will still run. It's just currently your Groovy editor doesn't recognize that. So now we've got the beginning, the opening HTML of a table. We've got the content of the table. It's been iterated through and it's built out this HTML table that we have. The next thing to do is to close it off. So we are going to say output equals output plus, and we are going to paste the closing of the table table body and table. So now we have the HTML we want stored in the output variable. All we need to do is add in this line here. And the macro is ready to use. So if I go here now to add this macro to my list and it's added to the list you see here along with the ones that can built in with script runner i can go to this world db page i'm going to go to add a macro i'm going to search for the one i've just created i'm going to insert it into the table let's put this title above it let's update and now you can see this page is actively using a custom macro that we've created to extract information from an external database outside of Confluence. Now we can do more interesting and dynamic things with the ability to create custom macros. So as you may have previously remembered with the world database, what we did previously was we just defined the number to show as a hard coded 10. We can actually make this a parameter. So if I go to add a parameter and I say I want this to be a int, we're going to call this variable num to show. This is the variable that's going to be stored in the code. The label, so the title, so we're just going to call, we're just going to say number of countries, the description, number of countries to show, and we're going to default this to 10 regardless. We won't make it a mandatory parameter, there's no need to do that. Now, to bring this into the code itself, what we need to do is we need to access the parameters variable. So if I replace this line here 
And with this, we access the parameters variable dot numbers to show, which is where this will be stored because we've named it num to show up here. So all I now need to do is update this correctly. If we go back to this page, it will still be showing 10 because that is the default number. However, if I go into the macro itself, I can change the number of countries to 50, for example. Save that, update, and now we have a lot more information show. We could also expand on this in different ways. For example, we could add more parameters to adjust the SQL query that we make to make a more specific query. Or we could add um, parameters to change the columns shown in the table. So change the information shown in the table. All we'd have to do is add the parameter up here, bring it into the code the same way we've done with numbers to show, and then insert those variables where and if we need them. This example is a foundation for you to build upon and create your own custom macros in conjunction with other script runner features. So in this example, we've used resources and the idea is to build macros that could benefit your users. This could be a specific example, could be adapted to maybe create a macro that shows information about a group of employees and their contact information that may be stored in a HR database rather than your Confluence instance an example in how this could be expanded upon. A different example on this how this could be expanded upon is you could choose not to use resources at all. You could just use the custom macro feature and instead of accessing a database, you could write code to access REST APIs and extract information from external tools outside of Confluence to show in macros as well. It's a really powerful tool, which is essentially a blank slate. So you can really do what you would like with it. But this is a a solid example for you to be able to build some more use cases from. For more information about either of these features, if you have any questions, please use the documentation, resources and custom macros. And if you have any questions that aren't answered in the documentation, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Thank you very much and have a great day.